Hey, God bless you guys. It's me, Crystal for Jesus, back with another video. Hello, hello. I hope you guys are having an awesome and wonderful day in the Lord Jesus. So you guys, today we have Dads in Christ. That's the channel name. You can always find it in the description box below if you want to check out the channel. He had some crazy dreams and visions that he wants to share with us. And he had some really interesting dreams, I believe, to be about the you know, the coming of Christ, the second coming when he comes with all of us on our white horses and everything. And so I'm really excited to get into this, you guys, so we can experience, you know, these dreams that he had. And thank you so much, brother, for sending this to me. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm so proud of you for coming on and being bold for Jesus as well. Thank you all so much. It's it's such a blessing to hear from you all and to see that you're being encouraged and being pushed forward to actually, you know, do something for Jesus. It's awesome. So you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. Hi there. Um, hello, world. Uh, hi, Crystal. Uh, my name's Corey, and uh, I wanted to share a few experiences or one dream and two visions that I've had since, um, I would say, early or mid-September of this year to November. So my last uh, last vision was just a couple of weeks ago. But I have, I have held off on <laughs> sharing this. And, of course, <clears throat> this has been tugging at my heart. It's been tugging at you know, what I'm doing day to day, this is basically all the stuff that I've been thinking about. And I just needed to get it off my chest. Now I feel like it, God is just saying, Hey, you need to, you need to get this message out. And, uh, I think the time is, and <laughs> the time is near, I believe like many others do that, uh, we're living in some crazy times, y'all. I mean, the geopolitics, the, the wars, I mean, guys, it is crazy out there, right? I mean, my dreams are crazy, or these visions are crazy that I'm about to share with you. So I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. You know, I want to bless everybody. I want to, I'm going to pray for everybody after this. I'm not going to do it right now because I, there's a lot of information that I wanted to share. So uh, I know everybody's time is valuable. And uh, I just wanted to go ahead and get into it. So thank you, uh, brother. This drawing that you see. I have to tell you was I felt compelled to draw. I had, I felt more compelled to draw than just to, to speak. And I, I used to draw a little, well, I used to draw a lot more back in, uh, in my days of high school, but then during college, you know, it just went away. I started sinning, started doing all this other crazy stuff, like many other people, I guess. And, uh, you know, lost my way. But uh, somehow I found my way back to Jesus, thankfully. And um, and I'm so thankful now that I'm drawing again. I, this is awesome. So God works in mysterious ways and he loves everybody. And uh, I, you know, I love, <laughs> I love everything about, you know, Jesus Christ. So I hope everybody else does as well. But uh, here's my first dream. This, like I said, this was back in uh, early September, maybe mid-September of this year. And uh, what you're seeing here is, if you can see down here, where my finger's pointing, way down there, that's me. And um, you know, I couldn't, I'd have to draw multiple drawings or try to make a video I'm, of this, but I'm standing here looking out. So my perspective is still first person. I'm just drawing it from like third person kind of point of view to get the point across. And... Um, Man, I'm standing on this rocky shoreline. I'm looking across this like bay or river or lake or something like that. And I see this other rocky shoreline. It looked like another hill behind it. Well, anyway, this th huge thing, this huge object, this huge whatever, come out from underneath this mountain or underneath the water. I mean, it started deep and then it just started coming out of the water. I mean, it went from deep to shallow to shallow to shallow. And this thing was moving. It was moving fast. And uh, it was moving with a purpose. And uh, I thought it was a submarine at first, you know, because I thought I saw some lights or thought, saw, thought I saw light. I don't know exactly what it was. But uh, when this thing surfaced, it just jumped out of the water at me and 
boom, like that, I woke up. <laughs> and uh, man, wow. it was crazy. But, <laughs> you know, the sky was an orangey red, you know, kind of tint. The, the water was a dark blue. And I'm standing there, you know, with a slight breeze blowing, no clouds in the sky. And this thing is just moving in the water. It didn't. So what, what, what I saw at first looked like it was moving in a linear fashion, but then it kind of swayed a little bit in the water, like almost like a sea creature or something like that. So mm. I didn't really think much of it after, you know, it hit me in the face or whatever, or it came into my field of view. You know, I woke up and I, I was like, man, that was just a weird dream, but uh, I'll come back to that later. Um, so that was the, that was the first dream. This didn't last very long. Now the second, second vision or the second, second time that I got a vision or a dream. So I wanted to look really quick, you guys, into um, Revelations because obviously, you know, it has to do with water. It has the stuff coming out of the water. And there is a lot in Revelations actually about, you know, um, things showing up, um, coming up out of the water and like the water representing a sea of people, like people, right? Um, in Revelations, it talks about that too. And I was just looking at the first four trumpets and the angels blowing the trumpets. And um, the second angel blew his trumpet and a great mountain of fire was thrown into the sea. One third of the water in the sea became blood. One third of all things living in the sea died. And one third of all the ships on the sea were destroyed. So that's interesting. I wanted to just share that with you guys. But there is more scripture verses. I would just call it a vision because I was awake, to be honest with you. Um, the second one was awesome. I loved it to death. It was a, an incredible experience, one that I hope other people can share. Now, I don't know where this was in like the trip, if it's a tribulation, if it's part of the rapture or before the rapture or it's the second coming of Christ. I'm not sure, but, um, or what was happening. I just, I'm not a biblical scholar. I'm not a student of the Bible. I'm trying to become <laughs> more in tune with the Bible and trying to read more every day, but, um, someone maybe can help me out with that. But anyway, <clears throat> the second part or the second uh, vision that I had was incredible. It, it started with me in this, what I think I was in the sky <clears throat> and, uh, I'm not sure I didn't have the foresight at the time to look down at my feet to see where I was. I was just in the sky. I I'm just going to say I was in the sky. Cause that's kind of what I felt like now in the sky. I, um, I'm looking up and I would be looking at my 11 o'clock and I see, I see, I see Jesus Christ in a chariot on this beautiful cloud with crazy looking colors and bright light. And, um, I can make out a silhouette and man, it was awesome. But I was kind of bummed because I didn't get to see him like full frontal, you know, like, uh, <laughs> like face to face, you know, but, um, uh, guys, I tell you, he looked like he was moving with the purpose on this cloud. He had the reins in his hand. He had the horse. He like, he was moving, uh, away from me. So like from my 11 o'clock, like that way. So let me show you that right here. So this is kind of like what I saw. Wow. It was awesome. Um, like I said, I couldn't make out his face, but I could make out like kind of like features of the chariot ish. So I love your drawing. Cool. Now, after a little bit, my vision, I would say about two or three seconds, my vision changed and I saw this other cloud. Um, I'm not really sure, but I just, my vision went to like my two o'clock or one o'clock and guys look, I saw another huge cloud with, um, mesmerizing colors. And I saw the horizon in the background of this cloud and another beautiful bright light. And I saw chariots and horses Man, I tell you what. So what happened first was I had probably four maybe chariots and horses coming by me. They started off slow and then it kind of picked up, right? Uh, it picked up in pace. Well, as it was picking up in pace, I mean, I started to see not 10, not 20, not 30, not 100. I was seeing thousands 
upon thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of these things coming out of the horizon, out of this bright light in the background of this cloud. And the only way that I can explain it to you of what I felt is that if you've ever been on a railroad track and you ever experienced a train coming by you, you know that power, that that energy, that that wind, that it just hits you, you know, as it's going by. I had that experience, but like a thousand fold more. <laughs> so I don't know how to <laughs> wow. describe it. It was intense. It was just was so crazy. intense, and it was it was almost pulsating. Like I almost felt like pulsating energy coming through my body. Uh, just one after another. I mean, it's almost, I can almost describe it as being in a shower, like a very hot shower. And uh, you know how some of the the shower heads have different settings or different, you know, you can make it either like a rain or a drip or uh, I don't know, you know, like a fountain. This one, I felt like it was a massaging, like almost pulsating massage, uh, just going through my body. As these things were coming, these Oh man, they were so beautiful. I wish I, I wish I could paint. I wish I had, I wish I had that talent. I, I just always kind of doodled and sketched a little bit, but um, never was that good at painting. But anyway, I wish I could have, wish I could have done that or shown you how beautiful this was. But anyway, if you see this, that's me, and these things are coming at me like they are whizzing by me, like on each side. So. Um, it was, it was incredible experience, but here's what I, here's what I took away after, after I reflected for a few, um, a few seconds here. And I was like, I got this, I got this feeling that like there was something in the air, like they were going to war or they were going to battle. They were, they were doing something like the energy was just palpable. It was just intense. And I thought that there was like, I really thought that there was a battle going on or they're going to a battle or something like that. That's, that's all I can say about it. That's what I thought. So like I said, um, this didn't last very long. It's, it probably lasted, I don't know, three or four seconds, I guess, while I'm looking at this and, uh, just mesmerized and it just cuts out. So, um, that was my, that, that was my first vision when I was awake looking at this, which was awesome. Oh my goodness. Now so moving cool. on, um, this where things go back to getting a little crazier and a little more dark. And, uh, I, I think the, I have to, I felt, I, it took me a long time to come up with the nerve to try to show you guys or try to tell you guys what I saw, what I experienced experienced um because i couldn't really wrap my head around it um i didn't really know what i was seeing to be honest with you and i mean i saw it but i i couldn't explain it i just i just couldn't um so i had to draw it out and um here's what i saw it'd be my here's my third one let me put that up there so the, this dream or this vision started out, what does that look like? It was a daggone sword through a mouth on some kind of dark looking, hideous creature thing. I have no idea. It was just like dark. It was black. It was like the blackest black that I could, I could uh, see. I mean, I tried to make it darker, but I ran out of number two pencil lead. That's, I, that's how much I was trying to make it so dark. But this thing was crazy looking and it had 10 horns on it without a shadow of a doubt. I'm sitting here looking at this thing and I seriously was counting 10 horns on top of this thing. But I didn't see any eyes. I didn't see a nose. I didn't see anything like that. I just saw blackness and a mouth and a sword coming through it. Now, you might be asking yourself, uh, what's so significant about this sword? Well, I have to give you a few more details about this sword that you might not know. This sword, when I was at a distance looking at this, it looked like a normal sword. It looked like a, um, looked like a medieval sword, you know, like, like a nice looking sword. But the thing that got me was... It, the color was just a little off. It was just a little bit more beautiful than that metallic looking 
color that you kind of see um, on swords. And the interesting part of this uh, whole vision, when I'm looking at this thing, was <laughs> it, it, it was super sharp. It was it was crazy. So I, I was able to, in this vision, zoom in on this thing, right? Just zoom in on it, kind of like a microscope. You know how you, you, you want to look at something under the microscope? You can twist the knob and you can zoom in more on it, you know, magnify it, so to speak. But anyway, I was able to magnify or zoom in on the sword. For some reason, I was really drawn to the sword. And um, this sword was absolutely beautiful. I zoomed in more and I got to a point where the sword didn't resemble us. It, it wasn't made out of metal. It looked like it was made out of a gemstone, like a blue sapphire, like a dark blue sapphire or a smoky quartz, like a dark smoky quartz. And this thing was just absolutely polished. It looked beautiful. I, I don't know how to describe it to you. Well, my curiosity got the better of me and, um, I decided to zoom in more because I was really interested in these edges on this sword. And when I zoomed in even more on the sword, I noticed that the edges, they were made of white. It looked like thousands of strands of like individual strands of light all together. And man, it was, that just blew my mind. I couldn't describe it other than that's just kind of what I saw. So that that was pretty cool to see. So I zoomed back out and, you know, when I zoomed out, it looked like a normal sword, just slightly off with the color. But I zoomed in it. I mean, I it was it was pretty incredible. And of course, it had these these 10, this whole thing had these 10 horns on it and it had this crazy mouth and it was just dark and black and just menacing looking. It looked like the face was moving or this whatever this thing was, the mouth was moving or things like the lips were moving around it. I, it. It just looked like something out of like a, like your worst nightmare type thing. That's what, that's what I was, was viewing it as. And, uh, it gave me goosebumps. It gave me the eebie jeebies, if you know what I'm talking about. So, um, that was the first part of this vision. Now the second part of my vision changed and, um, you might've already gotten a glimpse of it, but I started, I, I zoomed out and I was at like maybe 10,000 feet up in the air and, uh, looking like looking down at, like if you were in an airplane, like looking at the ground. And this is what, this is what I saw. Look at that. I saw this ginormous beast looking thing, like creature, like a dragon or something. It was, it's kind of hard to tell, but this thing had seven heads on it and it looked like it might've had a horn on each head or something. I'm not sure. Cause it, I mean, looking down on it and it, this, what it was doing, it was crazy. I mean, it was stomping on everything. So I'm like, imagine I'm, I'm in an airplane, 10,000, maybe to 15,000 feet looking down at the ground. And that's what I see. And this thing was moving, but it was so big. It looked like it was moving slow, but imagine being on the ground with this thing coming at you. It looked like Godzilla like like the movie Godzilla but even bigger than that with seven heads and long necks it looked like it had it looked like a dinosaur at first it, i mean the necks the long necks were i don't know that's what that's what got me and then the heads and um uh, i couldn't make out if it had wings or not i think the wing it could have been tucked in on its side you know with the if he had wings that were you know, if you're not, if you're just walking around and the wings are tucked to your side, you know, if you've ever seen a dragon, it might've been like that. It was just so hard to tell because this thing was massive. It was bigger than a bronchiosaurus. It was bigger than a dinosaur, like by tenfold or a hundredfold. So it was just hard to tell. It was hard to make out exactly what it was, but I could just see this thing stomping and stomping and stomping and stomping and just, just destroying like cities and houses and everything. Well, the other part of this vision then switched over to what I thought was across a waterway or something to that regard. And that's what I saw. This is some other kind of creature or some other kind of beast. I wasn't entirely sure, but um, it, this thing, I think, had seven heads on it and it looked like a predatorial, like a predatory cat or something to that regard. I'm not entirely sure. And uh, it definitely had a tail, but the the thing that drew me to this was like 
things were just off. Like they didn't match. So, like there were different things put together on this creature or this beastly looking thing. But it was the paws that caught me because it didn't match. It looked like it looked furry. It looked like dense fur and it had claws. It looked kind of like a bear claw or something like that, but just way bigger. I mean, this thing was massive too. I tried to draw this kind of to scale, but like I said, I'm not the best artist, but this kind of gives you the idea of it. So this thing, these two things were nuts to look at and they were scary. It was just intense. And I was just thankful that I was up in the sky looking down at these things and just praying like for people and things like that that were down there. Now I couldn't see people. But, you know, I, I just had to assume or imagine that there were people down there. And this, like I said, this thing was just stomping and, you know, I could see fires and stuff like that happening. So, um, yeah, I got the eebie-jeebies about this one. This one was uh, pretty intense. And, uh, yeah, I figured that I needed to share this with you guys because, uh, you better get right with God. <laughs> That's all I can say. I hope everybody is right with Jesus Christ. And I hope everybody's praying and, uh, you know, not sinning and trying to live, to live in the image of God and what he wants us to live as. Because I can tell you what, if these things actually come back or what I saw is true, man, oh man, that would, you don't want to be in this path. But, um, man, that was scary. And, I'm still, I'm still to this day kind of confused. Almost, I don't know how else to describe it. It was just, it just gives me goosebumps even now thinking about it. So because I didn't really know what this was and I have not read the Bible or all the Bible yet, um, still working on it. I asked God for, um, I asked God for scripture and try to explain this. And lo and behold, I got Daniel chapter seven. And, um, after reading that, if you read about the beast, guys and gals, <laughs> I'm pretty darn sure that I saw the fourth beast that Daniel was describing. And um, it's hard to wrap my head around it still, but I'm almost like I, I'm almost 100 percent confident it was the fourth beast or some version or something. I mean, all these things were happening so quickly in my vision that it was hard to keep up and hard to discern you know, the, the beasts and the creatures and the darkness and the destruction that I saw. So, um, I just wanted to share these with you guys and, uh, let you see kind of what I saw. Um, you know, I, I think a picture says a thousand words. <laughs> so I hopefully, hopefully this, hopefully you guys can see these and kind of see what I was seeing. So, um, so I asked God if there was anything else he wanted me to tell you guys, and um, he did. And he told me to tell you guys this last. And uh, this came from Revelation. And it was in chapter 19, verse 15. And I'm just going to read this to you because he told me to. And uh, it said, coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has the name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Man, I'm telling you guys what, I've got a feeling that he's coming back. Um, like many of you that have, <laughs> have sent videos in, I mean, I kind of feel the same way. Actually, I do feel the same way. So uh, stay strong in your faith, stay strong in your prayer, stay strong in Jesus Christ and try Amen. to get this message out to as many people as you can. Thank you so much, Crystal, um, you know, for having this channel, you know, this took You're a welcome. lot of cur courage for me to even come on here and do this. I didn't want to do this. Yes. I, you know, I'm, I like anonymity. I don't like being online. I don't like any of that stuff, but I just felt compelled to do this and to share this stuff. So Yay. I wish everybody the best. You know, God bless and Godspeed and, um, you know, be safe out there until and <laughs> until the rapture happens. So love you guys and have fun with the rest of our days that we're still on earth. And make sure you enjoy every single day. Do whatever you got to do. Go have fun. Go to your happy spot. You know, go go be outdoors, whatever it is, you know, go enjoy it. So 
that's it for me. If I get another one or another dream, then I will share that one too. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much, brother. That was awesome. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that, yes, you came on, you were bold, and you did it for Jesus. Amen. That's all that matters because you want to look Jesus in the eyes, right? And, you know, and be like, Lord, I did. I did it. I did it. Right. And then Jesus is going to smile and be like, yeah, you did it. Yeah. High five. Right. <laughs> So you guys, have you guys read Daniel chapter seven? It says Daniel's vision of four beasts. And then um, the vision is explained. So I'm going to go into the vision explained really quick. It says, I, Daniel, was troubled by all I had seen and my visions terrified me. So I approached one of those standing beside the throne and asked him what it all meant. He explained. He explained it to me like this. These four huge beasts represent four kingdoms that will arise from the earth. But in the end, the holy people of the Most High will be given the kingdom and they will rule forever and ever. Then I wanted to know the true meaning of the fourth beast, the one so different from the others and so terrifying. It had devoured and crushed its victims with iron teeth and bronze claws, trampling their remains beneath its feet. I also asked about the 10 horns on the fourth beast's head and the little horn that came up afterward and destroyed three of the other horns. This horn had seemed greater than the others, and it had human eyes and a mouth that was boasting arrogantly. As I watched, this horn was waging war against God's holy people and was defeating them. <clears throat> Until the Ancient One, the Most High, came and judged in favor of his holy people. Then the time arrived for the holy people to take over the kingdom. Then he said to me, this fourth beast is the fourth world power that will rule the earth. It will be different from all the others. It will devour the whole world, trampling and crushing everything in its path. Its ten horns are ten kings who will rule that empire then another king will arise, different from the other ten, who will subdue three of them. He will defy the Most High and oppress the holy people of the Most High. He will try to change their sacred festivals and laws, and they will be placed under his control for a time, times, and half a time, so three and a half years. But then the court will pass judgment, and all his power will be taken away and completely destroyed. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be given to the holy people of the Most High. His kingdom will last forever, and all rulers will serve and obey him. That was the end of the vision. I, Daniel, was terrified by my thoughts, and my face was pale with fear, but I kept these things to myself. Amen. So that's Daniel, and I want to go to Revelations, because um, <clears throat> Revelations also talks about the beast with the horns, and it's actually in Revelation chapter 13. It says, Then I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. It had seven heads and ten horns with ten crowns on its horns. And written on each head were names that blasphemed God. This beast looked like a leopard, but it had the feet of a bear and the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave the beast his own power and throne and great authority. I saw that one of the heads of the beast seemed wounded beyond recovery, but the fatal wound was healed. The whole world marveled at this miracle and gave allegiance to the beast. They worshipped the dragon for giving the beast such power, and they also worshipped the beast. Who is as great as the beast? They exclaimed. Who is able to fight against him? Then the beast was allowed to speak great blasphemies against God, and he was given authority to do whatever he wanted for 42 months. Again, that's three and a half years. And he spoke terrible words of blasphemy against God, slandering his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. And the beast was allowed to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. And he was given authority to rule over every tribe and people and language and nation. And all the people who belong to this world worship the beast. They are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life that belongs to the lamb who was slaughtered before the world was made. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand anyone who's destined for prison will be taken to prison. Anyone destined to die by the sword will die by the sword. This means that God's holy people must endure persecution patiently and remain faithful. 
the beast out of the earth. So there's another beast that comes out of the earth. And then in chapter 17, there is the great prostitute, which is um, a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that had seven heads and 10 horns and blasphemies against God were written all over it. The woman wore purple and scarlet clothing and beautiful jewelry made of gold and precious gems and pearls. In her hand, she had held a gold goblet full of obscenities and the impurities of her immorality. As as mysterious name was written on her forehead, Babylon, the great mother of all prostitutes and obscenities in the world. I could see that she was drunk, drunk with the blood of God's holy people who were witnesses for Jesus. I stared at her in complete amazement. And then... <clears throat> why are you so amazed? The angel asked. I will tell you the mystery of this woman and of the beast with seven heads and ten horns on which she sits. The beast you saw was once alive, but isn't now. And yet he will soon come up from the bottomless pit and go to eternal destruction. And the people who belong to this world, whose names were not written in the book of life before the world was made, will be amazed at the reappearance of this beast who had died. This calls for a mind with understanding. The seven heads of the beast represent the seven hills where the woman rules. They also represent seven kings. Five kings have already fallen. The sixth now reigns and the seventh is yet to come, but his reign will be brief. So anyways, yeah, that keeps going on there. But um, yeah, there's a lot about the beasts and also about the beast coming up out of the water. So in like verse chapter 13, chapter 13, I should say that, um, you know, it says that the beast rised up out of the sea and the Bible has told us that the sea represents the people, you know? So I wanted to read that for you guys, you know, just to give a little Bible in there, Bible reading, right? How awesome is that? And I try to do my best, you know, I try to do my best to link your guys' dreams to the scriptures, right? Because not everybody knows everything that's in the word. And so they're new to the faith or, you know, whatever it might be. But I hope to like continue to be able to help you guys find the scripture verses and, you know, understand that like this stuff is in the Bible. So without further ado, y'all, if you made it to the end of this video, please leave below in the comments drawings for Jesus with some hearts, awesome drawings for Jesus with some hearts, awesome drawings for Jesus. And I will see you guys again soon in the next one. Bye.